Mm, I need some and I got it. Hi. I got it too. There we go. Here it comes. Yay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. It's me, it's me Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes. Hi. Let me make sure I'm muted. I am muted. Okay. Now I am checking, oh. checking the yep. chat. Hi, everybody. It's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes, and Helen Cowart, tuning in Hello. from calling in from London. And yep. we are uh, wanted to talk a little bit tonight about um, satin finishes on your jewelry. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we talked a little bit about this on our Instagram just a moment ago, Jewel Tip Tuesday. But mm -hmm. we wanted to delve a little bit here and talk a little bit more about how they work and what they do and um, uh, when, when we use them and what I use them for. So uh, real quick for me, um, since I have a couple of pieces here that I've been working on, um, I've got a lot of my pieces are cuttlefish bone cast like that. What? There it is. Cuttlefish bone cast. So when I take these out of the pickle, I usually am brass brushing them because I want to get, I don't want to ruin any of the texture I don't want to no. knock knock back that texture so I'm not like sanding and doing a high polish on them because I really want to show off the um the surface a little bit more so a lot of times I'll either like sandblast them and then high polish and edge to give a little bit of visual weight so I'm usually doing a couple of different textures so it's, it's a slight contrast between the shiny and the frosted right. sandblasted right. texture, which is great because it that would really highlight all the things going on. Yeah, or I'll burnish the tops. So I'll have mm -hmm. like, a, a, like the texture down below and then a, a texture or a smooth top just by using like a burnisher instead of like a polishing wheel. And that way it just gets the, oh, the, the high I forgot. Top. I have another, another tool we can use. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I kind of use it. Um, what's, what's your favorite tool for doing fat finishes, Helen? So I, like I said on Instagram, I just started using, because I'm not at my studio, you get the right. and catalog. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The polishing, the, I'm sorry, the frosting wheel, this guy right here. Yep. Yep. Frosting wheels are great. Yep. yep. I also and, use these little fuzzy guys. Sorry, I, I'm trying to do it backwards. <laughs> yeah. These the fuzzy, fuzzy guys. guys. And the ring would be really good too for a frosted finish or a, a satin finish. Which the, one? That you had on the, on the opposite page. The radio oh, yeah. can be good for Yeah, that yes. I do have yeah. those as well. Um, yeah. But I also use um, something that is used in printmaking, which is a... Um, I'm, I'm probably not going to say it right. It's for mesotinting. Mesotint wheel. And yep. Yeah, the roulette wheels that have the, the texture on it. And those work great to give yeah, you a nice, a nice kind of um, texture to not be sh super shiny. Because also with that, you can burnish it and make it shiny. So you have a little bit of different texture. And so it's really, and, it, and when you patina that, we'll, yeah, I, I love the mesotint wheel and yeah. I have one from, from etching in a previous, in my previous life uh, before yeah. I started doing metal and jewelry, but I love the mesotint wheel because it just, we can do one, we'll do a tool tip on the meso, mesotint wheel. Let's do that. Okay. Yes. Because I okay. have some, I have a cool sample that I can show on, on that one too. Cool. A little, okay. a little art piece that's not even cool. jewelry. Well, let me do this. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And yeah, because I've got the uh, the Rio catalog pulled up here for um, oh, where'd it go? Oh, and it is where to go. There it is. Rio. There it is. OK, don't look at my cart. Don't look at my cart. <laughs> <laughs> is it the other tab? There it is. There it is. So the um, yeah. So these are oh, yeah, the, the frosting wheels do come in in. Fordham size and regular right. polishing we uh, polishing machine what size? I can't even imagine what that'd be like. You're like going through a steel car wash. Yeah. <laughs> well, and these you can replace the pins on, which is kind yes, of I would bet those. Yes, you could. So that makes it kind of nice because you can you know use the yeah. same wheel 
slip your little doodads on there and then, you know, and replace them when you need to. Um, but you were saying too, make sure you use glasses or safety glasses yes. when you're using safety these glasses these. because those pins can come loose and then that yeah. would be very bad. Absolutely. So um, we were talking a little bit earlier that one of the, the inspirations for using these was our friend Lee Appleby, who is a, yeah. um, uh, we love Lee. Lee is an amazing goldsmith in uh, Pontypool, Wales. And we know him through um, the BBC All That Glitters uh, reality program where he was doing metal something. Yep. And he actually used season the, one. Yep. Season one and was using the um, the frosting wheels or the, the texturing wheels um, in one of his projects and was sort of an inspiration for that. Uh, Helen and I were like, tell us more about this wheel. So that's <laughs> kind of what these do. Um, but you can see they have like little steel wheels and they come in like coarse, medium, and fine, right, Helen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, these kinds of uh, fiber wheels like this are I also love those fantastic, too. Yeah. Uh, for like satin finish uh, flap wheels. These are fantastic for doing really beautiful satin finishes on, um, on surfaces. So um, anywho, um, that was, uh, uh, I like, I like the idea of the satin or the, uh, the um frosting wheel yeah right yeah and you were saying the frosting that, uh, wheel was really cool you were saying that the course is not like aggressively coarse no it's not i was actually very pleasantly surprised the the fine is really tiny and the medium also is you know obviously tiny but the course has has a really nice texture um, I don't know. Can, can you do you have access to the picture that I sent, or do you want me to pull it up? I do. Yeah, I do. Um, let me. So that I'm way you can sure. see. Yeah, the audience can see what we're talking about. Um, yeah, I used it on the... gallery wire and on the edge of um, of a a piece that I recently made um, on the bezel, and right. it just because it because the glass was already in that sugar texture so it's sparkly having that frosted um texture on um on the metal just added to that and really made it sparkle and i think it really went it paired well together to have that text those two textures yeah 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 so um but you can see and this is which one the course yeah that's the it's, it's between the course and the medium i actually use both um yeah. So, I mean, it's a beautiful, yeah. like, just, yeah. It almost looks like it's been, like, sandblasted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's not a rough, it's not a rough texture at all. And, yeah, it's really super um, smooth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Well, and it really is good at kind of hiding a multitude of sins as well, because you can, it kind of burnishes the surface down a little bit. Yes. And so if you've got any... Um, like a lot of unevenness or, you know, something that's, you know, scratches and things like that. This is really good for blending that stuff out, which is, yeah. you know, awesome. That's one of the reasons, again, you know, you might want to stop at a satin texture if it's something that you're kind of like, okay, I, if it's, you know, super shiny, every single little everything. dip, yeah. everything is going to show. And it's really hard to get around that. Um, one of the uh, um, one of the artists work that I really love is um, I think it's Alex Boyd and he does this really beautiful like stippled surface on a lot of his work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's just he uses like black and gold and really beautiful things and yeah. um, he's he's an amazing metalsmith and teaches at a bunch of different places and his artist statement was hilarious I read that and he was like yeah I love that <laughs> surface because that reason um because it's a lot easier than trying to get a high polish on something <laughs> but, yeah and um, i will say i will say again when you're using the frosting wheel it is highly recommended that you keep it on a low rpm so you're not having the that issue of pins flying off because they're hitting so hard right so, and make sure you're wearing some safety glasses that are yep. yeah safety and it, glasses and it's a real light way. touch you don't need to push it into the into the wheel you just barely touch it and it's just like just dances along the surface right right the yeah. um other options 
for satin finishes. Mm-hmm. These are things that I use all the time. And I know you yeah. love these guys. Are the I love those wheels. guys. Yeah, the little fiber wheels. And little fiber wheels, they're awesome. Um, so little <laughs> fiber wheels are great for um, coarse, medium, fine, and extra soft, satiny stuff. And I use them on my wax as well as on my metal. This is my wax set. But I have, um, I've tested out, I have like what number mm-hmm. it is and the little test pattern on the wax. So I know what kind nice. of it's going to give me. And I use that for instructional purposes, but it's actually a block of wax that I've got it sitting in. And um, <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, and we are watching the chat on, on YouTube. So if you have any questions, let us know. Absolutely. Yeah. Or if you've got something you use, yeah, shout it out. What are, what are you using for satin finishes? So um, little scrubby pads. And you can get little scrubby pads like this at the hardware stores because a lot of times they're used yep. for like paint uh, removal and knocking back stuff and sanding surfaces. And But these come in different uh, coarsenesses as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they can be used wet or dry and get a little bit different um, a little bit different finish if you're using it wet with soap versus dry to get that like powdery satin. Um, these do a really good job at that. Um, and while you're at the hardware store or the store, Mr. Uh, Clean Magic Erasers are great for just, <laughs> and, and I got to say one of my best tips for cleaning wire is these things. Um, ah. Because you can actually like just pull it through like and yep. clean the tarnish off a of wire real fast. Um, nice. In fact, I wonder, would that so, work with chain as well or? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> in the shower just give it a good scrub um the um the thing that's really kind of funny about these because it is like a really soft um sponge that has a little pumice impregnated in it and they are not too terribly abrasive mm-hmm. on a lot of things but they will uh they're great for taking the polish off of things like wire um, and just like uh, 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 and cleaning them up really gently. Um, yeah. But they make little pads for like beadwork and jewelry that are oh. these, but they're really thin. And oh, these are cheaper I didn't know and that. Last awesome. a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. So you can just take your chain and wire just like whoop, right through whoop. it, and it'll just yep. take that tarnish right off. Um, but this is one of my secret favorite things. Oh yeah, here here it is. Bronze wool. I love that stuff. Love the bronze wool. Love it. Because the bronze wool is, um, first of all, it's beautiful stuff. It comes in different grits. It uh, So you can buy it from, uh, uh, oh gosh, hardware stores sometimes carry it. Yeah. But if you're looking for someplace like, um, if you're looking like wood finishing or uh, marine stores actually have it because it's used uh, it can be used on boats because it doesn't rust. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yay. Um, the other thing, it unwinds like uh, steel wool does, but it doesn't have yep. the the oil and it doesn't have the um, the detergent, detergent. That sometimes, yeah. and sometimes steel wool has. So this will last a really long time. And uh, the problem I have with steel wool is it's just like glitter. It just gets Everything yeah, it just it gets... really just kind of flakes off. And yeah, I actually um, discovered that it doesn't react well with patinas when I used it um, on, a, no. on a piece. And uh, I was like, oh, oh what is that little extra line in there? Huh. <laughs> yeah, because it will, it will get stuck in everything. And if yeah. it does and you go and drop it in the pickle, everything's oh, plating. Then you're, you're copper plating, yeah. Yep. Then you're yeah, the you other the other thing I love I love to do with the bronze wool is stick it on a split mandrel. Yes, yes. Which I mean, you can do with a, a lot of different materials. Yeah, actually, really do cool. you have the yeah. like um the the really thin magic eraser that would probably work really well? Go. <laughs> yeah. Flappity flappity flap. Yeah, um, so that works really good too. But yeah, that just um, gives you a couple of uh, ideas for um, for using these guys. And yeah, again, you don't have to go real fast with any of these if you're texturing. Um, and what I wanted to do real quick is I'm oh, and your uh, don't forget your your brass brush, your regular soft brass 
brass. God, I can't say that. Brass brush. brush. (laughs) And your pin finisher. (laughs) Right? Your brush brush. So I've got my, I can't believe it's like all of a sudden I couldn't say that word anymore. Uh, nobody can say brush brush (laughs) that's what happens at 2 a.m in london (laughs) that's right yeah thank you for staying up late i'm gonna switch my uh camera over here so that you and and do a little test thing so you guys can see yeah yeah um how these guys work a little bit differently there we go and there it is so yes i've got my do, 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 do. Here we go. Is that some, my... some inlay stuff? Or this stock? is actually etched. It's actually oh, etched. etched. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Actually an okay. Etched plate. And this is really great for sort of demonstrating this because I don't want to remove any of the texture, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to get a satin finish to kind of show this off. And if I'm using something like the, um, there we go. I'm going to spotlight this too so you guys can see close up and what this looks like. Uh, spotlight. Here we go. Uh, where am I? Um, did you spotlight me already? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I don't. I'm not a, I'm not uh, a hostess. Oh, I don't know. There we go. All right. So I think that might, might work. Okay. So um, if you're using like the bronze wool, you see it kind of mm-hmm. lifted some of that oxide off really fast. Yep. yep. But it's going to give me a, like a burnished surface really quickly on there mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. do a whole lot of damage to that really delicate texture that I've got on there. Um, yep. The uh, the magic race um, will just, again, kind of hit the, the highlight. Wow, nice. Look at that. And so it it just kind of takes off some of that stuff and you can see it's, you know, removed yeah. some of those oxides. But again, it's not removing my texture, right? The um, little pads, like uh, little uh, scruffy pads, mm-hmm. guys, are a little more aggressive because they have a yes. grit to them, right? So you can mm-hmm. really kind of see that. And the fibers uh, are a little looser so that they can reach yeah. down. Yeah. And so you can see it kind of getting down a little bit deeper and mm-hmm. definitely taking off those oxides. Um, so this is a finer grip than this one is. So this one right next to it. Do, 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 do. And, like, and I'm using these dry, but you can use these wet as well. So, and that's a little more aggressive and it's actually mm-hmm. softening some of those edges a little bit because it is so much more aggressive. Now, yeah. these guys, because they are... Um, they're rated like sandpaper. So I've got uh, 120, 180, 240, and 400. So, or 320, uh, yeah, 200, yeah, 180, 120, you can kind of see it in there. Um, but these guys are fantastic because you can use them as basically like sanding wheels. Um, yes. But they do a brilliant job of giving a satin finish. And mm-hmm. you can get the, um, uh, the fiber wheels these, these I got just on Amazon, but yep, yep. you can actually get these uh, from um, for your, your buffing unit as well. Yes, yeah. they come in the big size as well as the, the hand, hand piece size. Yeah. So I, I finally went through one the one that I had on my buffing wheel that it, I finally wore it down and not that I had to toss it. I love those guys. Yeah. So, this is going to take, it's obviously taking off all that oxide that's on the surface, mm-hmm. but it, because it is a little coarser, it's going to smooth down that surface just a little bit. So I want to be a little bit careful, but you can see that it's a satin finish. It's mm-hmm. not giving me a high shine, right? So this is giving me kind of that all over satiny finish. My trick is when I'm using these guys is to grab my, um, like an agate burnisher or just any burnisher, ah. and then go back over my edges or high surfaces for my shine. Because if it's something like this, yeah. that I want to get a shine on the surface, if I use a buffer to do that, the the low levels are going to get hit too. And if I yep. use something like a, a bigger, wider buffer, it's only going to hit the high surfaces. So that's going to give me that nice. flash of shine. Yep on the high spots, a little bit of sparkle and flash on those, 
mm-hmm. without touching that background. So that stays satin while my high spots get, get shined up. And I'll use that like on the edges, you know, again. Yeah. Oh, that's, kind of that give is it. a great tip. I love this. Yeah. This is one of my favorite yeah. finishes. Um, so, yeah. So when you've got like that, that background, and if you're going to do like a patina on this, your satin is going to pick up that, that patina yep. better. It's going to hold on to that, that yep. patina better. So I kind of like it for that. And then these high surfaces, again, would be nice and shiny. So giving you just a lot more contrast in what that looks like. But yeah, that gives you uh, my um, control group here, what it looks like. In the <laughs> and working my way around from, uh, from sort of the softest to the coarsest. Um, yeah. But there you go. But um, yeah, the satin finishes. And, and these are not, the cool thing is it's not expensive to work no. with any of these. It's, um, um, you know, kind of a... Um, a nice way to kind of get texture without having to, you know, work too hard. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But it's, but it, it really comes off as a beautiful deliberate choice because mm-hmm. it's not just shiny, you know, you can, right. shiny is a texture, satin's a texture, hammer textures, you know, can be really beautiful too. You can get hammer textures with things like, you know, chasing tools or with a hammer hand piece. And so there's all kinds or of your stamping to tools, yeah. Stamping tools, yeah. But that satin finish, there's something that's just really sexy about it. I, I don't even yeah. know how else to put it. Yeah, it's, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. You just want to just me, yummy. Me, 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 me. Yeah, yeah, right. And when you hit that up against something that's really high shine, a high luster, it's like bam, it's real sharp. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right, my friends, what else is coming up? We got classes coming up. We do. We have yeah. on the 1st, July 1st, mm-hmm. Make Your Mark Stamps and Punches with Julia Lowther. Right. And that is, I believe, this Saturday at yeah. da, 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 2 from 2 to 5 Pacific time. Right. And then we have your bench skills ring sizing which is a really great skill to know how to do properly because you have to be careful on some right. rings if the stone is is set a certain way you can pop that stone right out of the setting right right um, well and there is here's the thing if you're doing um ring sizing you know some people have like ring stretchers you know which is, mm-hmm. which is great and but there's more than one kind of ring stretcher and some of them are great for stones and some of them are not um, yep. So like the stand up kind that stretches everything is not great for anything with stones in it that can like break the band. Um, but there's other ways to do it to size the stone up or to size your ring up or down, just depending mm-hmm. on, you know, what the material is, if it's cast, if it's fabricated, if it's somebody else's, you know, there's a lot of things to consider. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I can stretch that out. And, and then they hit it with a hammer and then you've got to repair the hammer work. And so there's some other ways to do this that are great ways. And if you have to like solder a piece in ways to be able to do that and to get it to the right size is really yep. critical. So if you're, you know, having to like, you know, take a piece out or add a piece in, um, there are ways you can do that really accurately um, mm-hmm. and not and, and eliminate a lot of yes work and get it exactly right. So, um, but it is a really essential bench skill that a lot of people don't do. They just are kind of like, I can guess at this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can. <laughs> sure, you can guess at but that. Go for it. Why not do it a little more precisely? Yeah, I can. I can put that on a ring mandrel and beat the hell out of it, and then you know be really careful you know and of course and that's how we all started out doing it you know oh yeah yeah Um, yeah yeah. and then we learned our lesson and we're like oh maybe there's a better way (laughs) yes (laughs) and then you put it on one of these things you're like oh there is a better way and then you put on one of those things and you break the ring and you're like what happened so yeah it's um yeah there's all kinds of great ways to do that so anyway um so your ring your ring sizing class is on the 8th july 8th uh at 10 a.m Pacific right. time. And then after that, we have bah, 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 you're working with Gold Phil, and that's on the 15th. Yeah. And right. Jennifer, Jennifer generally does her classes, you know, like from 10 to 1. Um, so that one is 10 to 1. 
And then after that, then Julia again with her kinetic rivets class. And that's on the 22nd from two to five. And right. that's, that's also a really awesome class. And, yeah. um, and then we have our open studios open studio officially starting. Yeah. yeah. Our open studios will be starting in July. And uh, so summertime. Yeah. If you don't have time Yay. to take the class, but you're working on projects and you're like, I just need some feedback. I need some help. I just, I don't have time to like go in on a weekend and I just need to like hop in, get some answers, get out. And this gives you 20 or available hours. Get some answers and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> grab your coffee, hang out with us, you know, um, and uh, you know, come and come and check it out. So, you know, there's not a lot of places that you can get studio open studio access with with people that do this in their studios um for a couple of bucks an hour and that's basically yeah. what it comes down to um so it's uh 20 hours a month and it's kind of like a gym membership for your studio um yeah. so it's like 20 hours a month that you have access um or more and then um mondays and fridays every week and then every other wednesday and the times yep. we we really wanted to break up the times so they were good for people in the UK and Europe. We wanted to have people on the East Coast, middle of the country, the West Coast, and West of here that could could come in and have a big broader time range, plus yep. a, a different day time range as well. So we wanted to make it a little more open for you guys to be able to come and drop in and um, get feedback, get critique, get technical assistance, get you know answer some questions, you know, answer questions about classes or whatever you might need um, or follow up from classes. So, you know, we're, we want to be here for you. And we found this was probably going to be the best way to do it um, and have like a regular scheduled thing instead yes. of doing mentored study, which and trying to align you, two different calendars and, and yeah, and cost you $65 uh, for an hour yeah. or $60 an hour with a two hour minimum. So this is like 65 for 20 hours and you can drop in all month long uh, yep. to, the, uh, to the scheduled hours, which you can find on the website. And if you do the bundle of three months, it's actually yeah. really quite a saving. You it's save a lot, 15, a lot. Yeah, 15%. Yeah, That's like a 30, 30 something dollar savings. Right, yeah. So there you go. Well, yeah. Helen- yeah. It's two in the morning for you, right? So well, it's almost three. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> sweetie. I love you. No, I I am dedicated to this. I, I this is important and it's so much easier when you have someone to talk to. So it I, is. It is. Yeah. 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 I actually I really and this is one of the things I miss the most, you know, from being in in the states is have being able to to talk with you over tooltips because I really enjoyed doing that. I think it's yeah. you know it's yeah because I be me being the quote I would say maybe apprentice to journeyman level. Okay. okay. Um I have <laughs> I have less knowledge than than you and I'm not deprecating, but it's a good way for for someone to ask questions like me right. who doesn't know. And you know so much more than I do. And so I, I can ask questions. About something. And then you can show off your your expertise. I have a little bit. <laughs> I like yeah, to you share. do. Just a little I bit. Like to share. Oh, I like to share. Teaching so, yeah. at college level and independently. And, of course, crafting your own fabulous jewelry and sculptures. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So oh, check okay. out our website and follow us. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, my sorry website. For the effusiveness uh, people, but Studios, we do, so obviously we love each other. <laughs> jump over to Stenhouse Studios, all the work's available there. Or, yeah, yeah. if you're interested in, uh, in actually taking some classes with us, you can do that too. Um, or just sit again on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, <laughs> hanging out. Or, um, yes. Getting, oh, yeah. All right, people same time next week we'll see you guys Thank later you. and you can see um all of our instagram ones and youtube uh tooltip here on youtube hit the like button please and, uh, and subscribe yeah and, and comment ask us questions because we do check our our comments and we will respond yeah so ask absolutely. us questions 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, so smash the like button and uh, subscribe and uh, hit the bell if you want notifications because it'll give you a reminder of when we're live. So yep. it'll like be like, hey, we're live. And you can jump on and ask questions here. So we just want to be available for you because ding, you're special. And so yes. are we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we everybody. We couldn't do it without you. That's true. It's true. So we will see you next week uh, for Tooltip. Yep. And again, check out all the other ones if you missed anything. And they're in the title, it'll tell you what they are. So if you need something specific, you can see it there. There's also interviews with other people that you might want to check out. And, um, and have a great week. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye.